Some actual breaking news in the Fanatec soap opera. The acting chief restructuring officer issued this. The management board entered into a term sheet to negotiate exclusively with US-based leader in high-performance gear and systems for gamers, aka Corsair, on this restructuring of the company, concluding an open-ended and intensive examination of various offers from investors and consultation with its lending bank. This represents a significant milestone in the sustainable reduction of the company's debt and creates a positive outlook for the company. Andor AG is to be restructured in accordance with the German Act on the Stabilization Restriction Framework for Companies, or Start RUG. After completion of the due diligence, the signing of a binding agreement is expected for the end of May, which will promptly be filed with the restructuring court in Munich. The next quote is paramount for basically everything that is going to be next, depending on how it goes. And it says, part of the restructuring plan includes a partial waiver by the banks and a complete capital reduction, which would lead to current shareholders leaving the company without compensation and to the end or IG shares the listing from the open market. I'm going to start with the last part first, because in my opinion, that is the most interesting thing that we have ever seen thus far with all of this restructuring, Thomas being fired from the CEO position, but being kept inside and whatever is happening in uh, Fanatec as of this moment. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I'm going to leave that for other channels, but I, I just find this part fascinating. If this goes forward, that means all shareholders, small and big ones, are going to be ousted from the company and will receive no compensation. They will receive nothing for their shares. It's unlikely that this move from the CRO is going to be totally popular with the shareholders. You can't imagine that something saying, hey, look, um, your shares are now worth zero. You have no money out of this is going to be popular with them. You can imagine somebody like Thomas Yeckermeyer. He created a company, he owns about 50% of the company and now is going to have zero out of this. So it's likely that there is some sort of tug of war still happening right now with Thomas trying to get, you know, all of his armies uh, to back him and have some sort of counter proposal to save the company. And uh, it's also likely that a situation like this could hand, end up in German courts because it is quite strange to say that the company needs to be completely written out of shareholders when the company does have a revenue stream, it does have IPs, it does have a recognizable name, it is not totally insolvable with sides of the debt, and then you can completely melt the company away and leave the shareholders to die in a situation like this. The company, it isn't Fanatec, it isn't really in the best state, but you can't really say it is not in a situation that is completely insolvable because they have a lot of value still coming in into the company and they have products to release and products that are going to be bought. Unfortunately and ultimately, every time this situation escalates to sales or more investors or more of this or more of that, diminishes the value of Fanatec and increases the possibility of the company completely disintegrating. It's just irony out of this, but if you are too radical in a situation, of course, there's going to be a reaction from the other side that has a vested interest of maintaining the company working and not just selling it and getting you know, a payment out of it. Let's get out of the power struggle a bit and talk about Corsair themselves. What does it mean to sim racing and what I think it should happen if Corsair buys Fanatec. You can have a look at other brands that they own. One specifically is Elgato. Elgato is pretty much everywhere, is one of the most recognizable um, brands in streaming space, in recording, content creation, all of that. I own plenty of Elgato uh, components. This microphone is connected to a Wave XLR. I have a couple of stream decks. Uh, I've, I received one of them from Elgato. I've bought the stand that is having the light on top of me. You know, I've bought a couple of uh, capture cards from them. So it's something that I use because it's something that is not only recognizable and it is something that uh, works for me. It is likely that Corsair then doesn't want to use, you know, the Corsair Club Sport DD kind of meme that I've already seen in the comments. A, they want to keep Fanatec as a name. And Fanatec as a name in a space, it is usually recognizable. It is rec as recognizable as in Logitech and sim racing spaces. It probably doesn't have the same reach, but it is very recognizable in the space. So for them, this is like a, a huge win because they get an entry into the market. A win that will be automatic for Fanatec and probably customers of Fanatec is that they're probably going to try to streamline the situation they have with customer services. Customer services in a Corsair brands 
aren't really that bad. You send them an email and within 24, 48 hours, you're going to have an answer. So for example, if you have an RMA issue, that would be something that will be very easily solvable for you instead of whatever is happening right now in Fanatec. Depending on how Corsair wants to go forward, they'll probably want to put the Fanatec name in more markets, including Asia and Oceania, where it's there's lacking the, the Fanatec brand. I'm very much adept of that saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, but in this case, there might be, in my opinion, a case, if not for distribution ev everywhere, uh, there might be a case for uh, limited distribution in selected places. Uh, for example, Micro Center. Micro Center does a great job with uh, sim racing. They have done a great job with Mozza and Ace Tech. Could be the case that they could start selling there. I would at least hope for a limited distribution, not a wholesale distribution like Logitech and Trustmaster, because that makes the, the brand feel kind of cheaper. Um, but the limited distribution in a place that kind of understands sim racing and wants to present the sim racing product in a good way. If they do go somewhere in the brick and mortar store, I want them to be in Micro Center. The second thing that I would love Corsair to do is look at uh, Fanatec's current offering and have a good long look at it and decide that uh, there are some areas where the Fanatec uh, offering is missing. And in some cases, it is too damn common. And in, for example, in the CSL lines, there are plenty of CSL um P1 replicas that do exactly the same. And uh, honestly, having three of the same wheels, just a little bit different, it doesn't really make that much sense. So they, they need to rationalize a bit of the Fanatec offering, especially in terms of wheels. On the other side, like I said, um, they need to understand where there is a, a lack of offer. Podium pedals, club sport pedals, new club sport pedals. That means, uh, for example, the R&D can't take as long as it does, or at least going towards market can't go uh, take that as long as it does for some components that are still missing out there. So Corsair needs to tell Fanatec, you need to streamline your R&D, you need it to make it in a such a way that you can have a product fast enough not to feel that you're not doing any progress at all. The last point is a little more personal, but I think a lot of sim racers are going to agree with this. I think gaming in general, um, has been becoming more and more corporate in terms of communication, especially when their products are out. It's very Apple-like, and I, I appreciate the irony that Fanatec is more the most Apple-like in the in the sim racing space because they have a more closed ecosystem. But in terms of communications, in in terms of uh, ideas or uh, the way they acted, they always felt a little more rebel than most of the companies out there because Logitech, you know corporate space. Trustmaster is part of Hercules and Hercules is very, very corporate. Fanatec always felt uh, more rebel than everything. Asatec has a bit of that, but it's it's still, it's very much straight edge as well because they're also part of the gaming space. And Corsair coming in, even though they've, of course, they need to sanitize all of it because Corsair is a, a big company. I think they need to leave a little bit of the craziness that Fanatec brought in sim racing, and I mean craziness in a good way, they need to keep a little bit of that spirit going forward. To end all of this, do I see this CRO move to sell it to Corsair positively or negatively? In my opinion, I don't give a damn of what is the resolution of this. I just want to everybody to have, to get their shit together and resolve it. Because if I wanted to watch a long-standing soap opera, I would turn on the TV.